and welcome to Make Your Own String Art with me, Lindsay. And today um, I'm going to show you how to make your own string art heart with one of our, or well, one of my, um, string art DIY kits. So I'm going to show you first what is included in your string art box. So my boxes, I haven't done the labels yet, so please excuse me, they are very, very new. Um, but I always put up in the top corner what colour is going to be your heart. So this one is red we are doing today. So in your kit, you will find your string art board with your template for marking your nails. A pack of nails with your D-ring and the screw for on the back and your coloured thread. So I will just move that to the side and we'll lay this out. So you will need to provide your own hammer. So ask your mum and dad uh, if you don't have one. That goes for the older kids too. And just lay that out. And what I like to do as well is I like to have my nails just to the side of me so that they're all in easy reach. Oh, and another thing you'll need is a screwdriver. But that's the very, very last thing that you need to do. So, to get started, you've got your template. So you just put it on your board. Now I'm quite, because I have done a lot of these I'm very good with my dimensions, but if you're a beginner, make sure you've got a ruler or find a ruler and just measure your points. So on the camera to the side here, you measure the gap between this point and this point, and make sure that they are the same and the top points to your bottom point and make sure you've got the same gap there. That'll make sure that you've got a perfectly central heart in your picture. So once you've got that all sorted, mine looks pretty much spot on, you can grab your first nail and grab your trusty hammer. So what I like to do here is I like to mark it in a couple of places, just lightly, two or three taps, just very lightly just to get it in place. And we'll do one on the top and we'll do one on the bottom. Okay, and that stops your template from sliding about. So you can mark all your guide holes without having to worry about your template slipping around. Generally, once you've done a few, you can take these two nails out and your paper will stay in place because it's the first time it's being used it's not going to go anywhere. So, right, what I'll do is I like, because I'm a lefty, as you can tell I've got the hammer on my left hand, I like moving around to the left. Um, so it's up to yourself if you're right handed you might find it better working the opposite way around to what I am doing. So we'll just quickly do this and just tap once with the hammer each one, each point as you go around. So what I'll do for this camera down here is I'll just turn it around to show you. Just each point, find the middle of the point, middle of the cross, and just mark your holes. And I'll show you what I mean with regards to the template. So you could take these two nails out, and as you can see, that template's not going anywhere. It'll flap on this side just because it's not been nailed yet. But if you prefer not to work around nails standing in the way, you can do that. So we'll just continue on. Now this is real time speed for me. I've done, I've been doing this for oh nearly seven years now. Some days I'm quick and some days I'm slow, but today seems to be a fast day. Okay. 
So there we go. So that's all, your, all my nails, all marked. So what I like to do here, because paper, I like kind of, I like reuse. Um, so I always take mine off, so so that can be reused again if necessary. So if you've got so like kind of access to your own wood, um, once you've tried out my kit, you can go and reuse that as long as it's only for your own work. So, next point is marking in the nails. Now, I don't know if you can see on here, but each nail has got ridge marks on it. So there's four, four or five little ridges on here. So what you want to do is hammer to the first one, which is right in the middle of your nail. And this will mean that you've got plenty of space up in the top part of your nail for threading, the string around and it's not going too deep to poke out the other side because these boards are 12 millimeters thick whereas your nails are 20 so as long as you just hammer down to that first mark you will be perfectly fine so I will just quickly or try and quickly do this Now if you're worried about getting your nails in straight or you accidentally go off to the side, don't worry because as long as your heads of your nails are all in line, you will never notice. And even if they are slightly out, you got to do yourself proud because using a hammer and making a picture out of string it's hard work. So. so I'll just turn around so that I can get a shot from this camera here. Now what I will say at this point, and maybe I should have said it in the first part, as first nail, is please, 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 take your time. I am able to do this slightly faster, but I am used to hitting my thumb a lot with this hammer. Um, and it is quite sore. So Take your time so that you don't hit your thumb with the hammer because it does smart a bit. So we're nearly there. And just after this nail, just five more to go. There you go. So once you're done. Your picture will look something like this. And then we get on to the fun part. 
Now what I usually tend to do is have a cup on standby so that I can um, use my thread nice and efficiently. However, because I'm already on camera and I'm not that prepared, we'll just leave that for now. So, to tie your knot, what I like to do is have my loop ready. So, as you can see, I've gone left over right, just to get the first point. I always put my threads and start down at the very bottom of the picture, because from there, you can work nice and efficiently. So to do my knot, if you look at this camera here, we've done that first loop. What I like to do is move it over and go back through the loop underneath, but then put the thread back through again. So you've got it twice on the same bit. Pull that nice and tight. And then do that again, so nice wee circle, pull it through, over and pull it through again. And then make sure you've got it nice and tight. Right, so now we'll start straightening. So you can make it as messy as you want it. There is no right or wrong way of doing this. Just go with the flow and see where your creativity takes you. So, what I would say is make sure you get your thread on one nail, well on every nail, at least once. So as you can see from this camera here, I'm just looping around and going to the next. And keep your tension on throughout the whole process, because if you lose your tension, it'll ping off. So as you can see, it's slowly building up. And just take your time to get it how you want it to look. And I try and get at least some of these little gaps filled up. So it all kind of looks uniform. And just keep an eye on your thread. I've given everyone about 16 metres worth, which should be more than enough. But just try and keep the last, say, metre, just so that you can do an edge if you want to. You don't have to, but I quite like the edge because it finishes off the picture beautifully. Okay. Right, that's all I'm going to do here. I'll just do a couple more V lines. We'll do one there. Do one here. Here. What we'll do is finish here. Okay, so as you can see, I've picked a nail over here, but that I don't want to end up on this nail because I've already tied onto it with a knot here. I don't like having two knots on the same nail because it means that it's a lot chunkier and if you've got an eye for detail then you won't want that to stand out if you're looking up close. So to do the next bit and to do your edge, I like this bit. 
Um, I like to think of it as doing a figure out of eight and then move forward or space. So on the up close camera, as you can see, we go forward and then we go back to the same nail again. So it, look, if you see, it looks like a figure of eight and then we go forward to the next nail. So one, two and move forward. One, two, and move forward. And just keep on doing that all the way around. Now I can go fast with this, but I would recommend taking your time so that you make sure you've got your figure of light and going forward the line. Because you don't want to have to unpick it to get it right again. Because some people um it might they might accidentally like kind of put it over and then like kind of accidentally do that and then you've got the line coming on the inside which you don't want you want to keep this nice solid line on the outside so we'll just go around and get this back to where you started which is here. Okay, so here we're just going to do our same knot again. So, but this way, instead of like tying on, you're tying off. So you need to loop it around and then tuck it under. And that gets your first knot on. And then loop it around your nail, keep it nice and tight. And then it's not that easy. So I would probably recommend having a wee bit more length than what I've got here. So tuck it under, pull it through, and then tuck it under again. So that you've got your two loops coming here. Pull it nice and tight. And then pull it in towards the picture. And force that knot nice in the picture and then just to finish off and just snip it there and you can't really see where the knots are okay all right so last bit we need your screwdriver now this one's a wee bit long but it is my husband's one it's the only one he left in the house and let me just quickly get a ruler Okay, so for your last bit, you want to make sure that you've got your heart to the top and rest your ruler on. And then I want you to move it down around an inch. Now, because you're only putting one screw in, it does not need to be perfect line, perfect distance, as long as you can see it. Now what I do, just because I haven't got a pen, is I mark it so... Some of the boards are 15 centimetres, some of them might be 14 and a half. It depends on how it's been cut on the saw. Um, so this one is 14, well it's just over 14 and a half. So we'll say 14.6 centimetres, so 146. So we need 73 mil. So what I do is I find my 73 mil, get my hammer and just work. Now we hole here, and then you get your D-ring, what I normally do just to loosen up so it's easier to get it up on the wall once it's done, and you make sure that your hanging bit is to the top of your picture. There we go, and we get your screw, I always put it on the Phillips screwdriver first, and then try and find the hole. And then just a few wee twists in. There we go, there you have it. Nice complete string out heart. And that's how it looks on the back.
and then all you need to do is find a place for it in your home. Or if you've decided that you want to give it a gift, you can do that too. It's really up to yourself, but I do like hanging them in my home. So thank you very much for watching. Have fun and you'll see me again soon, hopefully. Bye.